right, what is going on, guys? It is time for a almost another episode of the Chasing Waypoints podcast. Where we're going to make this one, though, the official one. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. That is right. That is episode 200 of the Chasing Waypoints podcast. Today, Monday, May 13th. Currently recording this at 6.30 in the morning. The caffeine is fully in effect. How's everybody doing? Well, it has been a journey. 200 episodes, unofficially 210 But officially, we are at 200 episodes of the Chasing Waypoints podcast, and man, has it been a journey. A lot of stuff going through, going through the analytics, growing country-wise. Over 100 countries now. Thank you to all of those that listen abroad and tune in weekly, monthly, or every day. I don't know. Some of these episodes are kind of long. You got to listen to them in a few spots or in a few chunks. Speaking of which, in a little bo- in a little while after this episode, we're going to have the episode live with none other than Arturo Salas and Carter Klein, winners of the 2024 San Felipe 250, put on my score international. So that'll be a good one. That had a lot of fun. We uh, previewed the episode this weekend and uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so if you guys haven't signed up for the newsletter, they should be. And get a sneak peek on some episodes, maybe some audio clips, you know, I don't know. You never know, but you want to sign up if you haven't already. Head on over to the website, drop in your email address, and that comes directly to us. And we'll get you signed up for the newsletter. All right. So what else are we talking about here? I mean, 200 episodes. There's just so much that went on over these last few years. And looking at the episode ranking right now, just to check it out, let's see where where we're at. I'm going to put links in the description to some of these episodes. If you guys want to go back for some of our new listeners, you may not even have known that we did these episodes uh, with some of these guys. But way back when at the halfway point, if you guys have not already heard it, I'm going to turn the party down a little bit here. If you have not heard it, it is the episode number 105, 105, and that is none other than the 2023 Dakar Debrief with Mo Hart. That was an awesome episode. I remember talking to Mo, talking about the garbage trucks coming through and, you know, basically racing on the moon. Who knows? Maybe we'll get Sting to do something about that. Maybe we could come up with a song for that. Nah, cheesy. Never mind. Let's not go down that route. Anyway, so yeah, Mo Hart, third most listened to episode. The other two are just simple reviews. Baja five or Baja DRZ 400 is a DRZ 400 build that I had done. Uh, The most listened to episode is the F850 GS versus the KTM 790. Uh, But they are all under the same blanket because the Mo Hart episode, although much, much newer. Number third, number three. Uh, Then let's see what else we got. We'll put a link for that one. We do have the 10 essentials for the adventure rider. Yeah, this blog post, you know, that that one's kind of cool. So uh, let's see. Episode 100, the 2023 Dakar debrief with Skylar Howes. That was another great episode talking about his adventures out there, uh, making it out to the Dakar. So definitely want to check that one out again. Links will be in the description. Uh, Let's see. We do have another episode that we did as well. Uh, that was the coast to coast rally recap, uh, back then with Scotty Bloom of Baja rally so participating down in that rally recently got to go check that rally out too. If you guys have not put that on your calendar or have found out more information about it, the coast to coast rally is really, really awesome. It gets put on, uh, by Patrick and Romina, uh, and the coast to coast group and doing a awesome job at it. Uh, definitely one of those rallies where I really wasn't sure leading up to it, you know, going down there, traveling into Mexico, uh, getting in and, and checking out, you know, the sites and, and, you know, a little apprehensive at first. Uh, but man, once I got down there, it was just so awesome. And I'm looking forward to going down there. We got to see some places that were amazing, you know, into the jungles, uh, staying in some of these different bivouacs were absolutely epic. And it was a really, really good time. A lot of new guys in rally, a lot, a lot of new guys in rally. But uh, this year, you know, Mike Johnson, uh, Matthew Glade, 
uh, both taking the top steps on the podium. So very, very well done by those guys. Uh, then it, I mean, man, I don't even, uh, Matthew Ransom also as well, uh, taking a podium spot for that, uh, for that rally. So very, very good time. Really, really epic weather. I mean, it was, it was kind of cool. It was a little touch and go trying to get in with the, uh, the winds blowing and uh, hurricane several thousand miles off the coast, but you know, still enough to, uh, trigger some winds and well, Thankfully, we had a pilot that knew what they were doing. Uh, a little bit of a rocky one there. Uh, and then we also, another another Dakar debrief. This was one of the first episodes. You know, Mason Klein has been, I, I kind of want to say, almost a regular now on the show uh, doing multiple episodes. But this was one of the first episodes doing his Dakar debrief uh, back at episode 99. So if you guys want to check that out again, link will be in the description. Uh, another one we did, Jacob Argybright. Same thing, you know, talking about his racing and what he's been up to and what he has done. Uh, for that. And in this case, again, it was the Dakar recap. This was the year uh, back 2023. That was the year where we really got a lot of traction, got a lot of guys uh, coming back from the Dakar reporting back on what they had done. So if you haven't listened to we got a lot of longtime listeners, you know, the subscription, the analytics and everything. And I, and I really, really have to say thank you to everybody. Uh, newcomers, Old timer, everybody that's been the the people that have been with us since uh, since the beginning, uh, you know, a shout out to Chris and Kelly over at Moto Minded uh, for being, I mean, one of the very very first supporters of the podcast, uh, and and you know, it, it was really really cool to go to some of these events, and I remember it was the Happy Land Ranch Rally uh, way back when, and and you know, finally meeting people face to face, you know, it's really starting to get and, and mingle with everybody, and how welcoming everybody is. And it was really awesome to talk to both of them uh, and to find out that they were listeners. And, you know, I, you know, it's moto minded. Come on. Lights, rally towers, all sorts of, you know, handy doodads. Uh, so that was definitely awesome. And, and you know, we've we've kept in touch since and it's I and mean, it's been great. And so a lot of new stuff, too. I got to say, I, uh, we did have a, a slight conversation. We didn't have the in-depth conversation that I wanted to at SoCal Rally, but uh, there were some hints there of some new products coming and which is, which is awesome. You know, I love seeing companies innovating and coming up with new things, especially, uh, things that are going to be able to help in the rally world and continue to grow this sport that we all are tuned in for. I'm loving. So a lot going on there. Uh, let's see where else we got. Uh, we got Jacob Argy bright. We do have uh, another episode too. Uh, now this is a, this has been an interesting one. So, are we we know we absolutely know and love that new bikes are coming to the market new things are happening ktm talking about the 2024 2025 I, I don't know they could call it the 2030 but you know the chances of people getting these bikes is going to be really difficult uh the new ktm uh rally factory replica 450 announced now we're going on to that new generation chassis uh so it'll be interesting to see uh, as people get those bikes, how that's going to shake down. But, you know, it's all right. It's, uh, you know, but um, my guess is one of those in the U.S., if you can make it happen, is probably going to be somewhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars. By the time you ship the thing, by the time you find somebody that's willing to let it go, it's going to be difficult. Uh, they only make, you know, a handful of those bikes a year. So basically unobtaining them. But you know what the best part about it is, is that there's companies like Motor Minded um, and Raid Garage that can do rally kits for bikes that are already here you know aurora rally there's a ton of different ones um you know we want to get uh I, I and i will say there are a bunch of different ones the one that i have seen and jacob argybray will attest to this uh and this was at one of the sonora rallies that he ran uh one of mason klein's backup bikes uh, and after a tumble and i will say of the towers that I've actually seen, I've never one, never seen one of them actually crash tested uh, other than this one, uh, and which is the one from Moto Minded. So the only thing that was uh, toast on it was basically the uh, windscreen, which just so happens to be an Austrian part and something that the team at Moto Minded doesn't make. But the tower was still straight and everything was still functional, which is there, done. You know, not to say that some of the other towers aren't just as strong or whatever, but you know, the, the, what's that cliche saying the, the proof, the proof is in the pudding or something like that. Or I, I, yeah, I don't know. Something like that. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But anyway, so that was definitely, uh, you know, a test of that rally tower and, you know, yeah, maybe we can't get the KTMs. We can't get the rally factory replica, but you know what? 
it's all right. You know, we have enough resources here uh, in the U.S., which ships abroad. And a lot of you guys abroad, you know, there's companies like uh, Manuel Lucchese out there with uh, Rebel X uh, that does towers, that does different things. But, you know, it just depends about what you're going for, what you're looking to do, you know, how competitive you were going to be, how entry level you're going to be. You know, there's a lot of different options. You know, I was for a long time, I was really against kind of going, switching away from paper and going to tablet. But then as I realized it, that, you know, I'm not writing competitively so I can deal with things that have a wider window of products that I can use. And I mean, and it has been absolutely a journey with that, you know, figuring out how to make a switch controller that's analog rather than Bluetooth, uh, doing things like, you know, mounting up to uh, the like the stout mount, doing a rally light setup on my 501, you know, something that is just a basic easy to do setup that will work and that is not really entailed because a majority of us, you know, myself and and you guys that are listening that are maybe trying to get into the sport or thinking about getting into the sport, you know, th- we got to have a place to start. And, it, and I honestly believe that place to start can't be, you know, showing up and, and, you know, uh, I, I want to say this the right way. It's not showing up and handing your credit card over uh, and keeping it on file uh, with places like Rally Moto Shop, who has all of these products that you're going to need for the rally side of it, but it's like picking and choosing. And and that's one of the things that I will say that, you know, with Matthew offering a bunch of different products is, is that you can kind of back your way into a rally light setup. And then from that rally light setup continues to grow. So that's really the, the approach and the, and the angle that I want to try and, and, and focus on and continue to focus on in this next year, uh, for the next hundred episodes, you know, I don't know. It's, it's definitely one of those things that you, you work on it little by little and you decide how far you're going to get into it. And I really think that the way forward is, yeah, let's go with a basic digital setup. That's good enough to get you in, uh, and then continue on from there. So I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. That's how I'm going to do it. I am working on uh, immediately after this episode and after I get everything set up and then we get the one uh, episode, which is now officially going to be episode 201 uh, with uh, Arturo Silas and uh, Carter Klein from Hero Racing. Once we get that episode up, uh, I'm hitting the cat and I've got, you know, uh, the F900 uh, GS, the 2024 F900 GS. You know, I still want to do an episode of that comparing it to the KTM 790 little older generation versus, you know, the latest and greatest out of BMW, you know, that's the, that'll be the kind of the comparison there, you know, got to watch out on that one. Cause now it's a little bit more apples and oranges. Uh, actually let's go with blueberries and oranges. That makes a little more sense. And, you know, color coordination and all anyway. So there's, you know, a, a previous generation bike, you know, one of the first iterations of the 790, 890 adventure platform out of Austria versus the BMW F900, which is now it's basically third generation of, of bike. You know, you started off with the 850, then you had a gen two 850 and now you have the 900. So very interesting to see, uh, those comparisons and, and right away being right at home on the BMW, uh, because it is substantially more refined for road riding, but now they're starting to put the teeth on it for the dirt lowering the weight, improving the suspension, you know, really working on that, the power band and the riding modes, all of that stuff, just once again, being typical BMW performance, which is great for the dirt. I think, you know, that's worked out really, really well. So I'm looking forward to doing more on that. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but let's see, let's drop down the list. Uh, you know, we've talked about Covey with Mike Johnson, you know, Mike Johnson, a long time rally racer, uh, based out of Texas, uh, part of the rally comp group, uh, creator of that rally comp device. And so if you guys haven't seen those, you're going to see a lot more of them, uh, this coming year, they are basically handling all of the timing and scoring for North America. Uh, the devices, whether you go to Sonora rally, you go to Baja rally, or you go to, uh, the coast to coast rally, Kota, any of those, the Battleborn rally, which is going to be coming up this year, next year, um, you know, working on that, still getting dates, uh, going for that. So a lot of stuff going on, but a lot of it is, you know, the rally comp will be there. So if you guys haven't learned how to use one yet, don't worry, you'll have a chance soon enough. Uh, but we talk with him way back in episode 124, uh, as well, talking about the Covey adventure with him. Uh, one of the first racers, uh, on the Covey, 
uh, that completed the Sonora Rally and then backed it right up, completing the Nora 1000 uh, all the way down the Baja Peninsula, pretty much on the same bike. So, you know, again, the Cove racking up the miles and, and continuing to impress a lot of riders, you know, and for that one, both in price point and, you know, and, and it's quickly building its reliability. You know, a lot of people that have run it and, and man, have I seen the spectrum of, of, you know, comments and, and a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of negativity, a lot of positivity. I've seen it all for that bike, you know, all centered around one bike, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, I think there are more happy people than negative people. And at this point, the bike is long enough in the tooth and there's enough cumulative miles that if it was the piece of crap that some people make it out to be, uh, the rest of the industry would have caught on or there would have been a lot more of it. So, uh, just some food for thought, right? You know, if, if you think that a bike or if you think that a product is not worth what it, you're paying for it, you don't notice what it does. You don't notice it. So let's think, okay, well, do I need to put more miles on it? Is it, you know, maybe it's something that's subjective that you personally don't like, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, a, a deal breaker. You know, if you really think about it, it's like, well, you know, the Honda was good, but the KTM wasn't, but the gas gas was better, but the Husky didn't really work for me. And then I switched to Cove and that was okay. And then, you know, I decided to go with CF moto and then I went as look at the things, you know, if you have a common thread, you know, if you think the suspension sucks on all those bikes, well, maybe it's because you and I are not the ones that are, those bikes are set up for. Maybe we do have to put money into the suspension to get it to work correctly you know, to what we like, you know, there's a lot of things that end up being very subjective, very objective, or however you want to, where a lot of it is opinion, you know, and it's difficult to say, you know, well, well, he said it was great and it was absolutely awesome. And then I wrote it and the thing is complete junk. So, okay. But you know, your, your opinion, what you're scoring it on is very, very different. If you have somebody that races, you know, at a professional level, at a very high level, you know, there's going to be things that they notice and that they like and dislike versus what we like and dislike of a bike, you know? So it's kind of an interesting, uh, a, an interesting rabbit hole to go down, right? When it comes to product reviews and stuff like that. But if you look at it from 50,000 feet, you know, I have not seen yet a, a thread where there's these issues and it's just, you know, it's where a lot of people are looking at, you know, saying, you know, I no longer have confidence in the bike. Look at what happened after a thousand miles. Look at, you know, look at these things. Is wear and tear going to happen? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The only bikes I have not seen wear and tear and I get to deal with them daily is the bikes that don't get ridden. And even then you have issues with things like seals drying out and, and fuel pumps going bad and things like that because there's no miles put on the bike. So I don't know. Pick your poison. But anyway, so episode 124 with Mike Johnson, we talk a lot about the Covey rally bike uh, and his experience with that one. Uh, we did do another Dakar debrief, uh, episode 127 with Ace Nelson talking about his adventure out there. Uh, teammate to Jacob Argybright for that one on the Deuced Rally team. Uh, then let's see what else we got. Uh, 71 uh, in the in the bivouac with Pete and Ashley of Moscow Moto. Uh, that was a good one. Hearing the story about Moscow Moto, how it got started, some of the new products, and talking to them about their travels and the things that they have done all over the world is absolutely awesome to hear went to a presentation that they did here in San Diego with their traveling road show, uh, talking about brat packing and, and how they, you know, how they go about it, how they get insurance, how they go and travel to these places, buy a, a really cost effective, inexpensive bike, go and put a bunch of miles on it. And then basically, you know, sell it at the end of their journey. And it's very, very cool to hear their adventures. So if you're a new listener and you're, you kind of into that adventure riding, you know, a little more adventure riding, side of things uh definitely want to check that episode again i'm going to put the links in the description so you guys can jump on these it'll be the full list uh of episodes uh we got here uh so that's uh, that was 71 with pete and ash of moscow moto uh and then uh we have another one uh this was uh episode 79 this was in august right before the 2023 dakar rally uh and this was a really really fun episode i gotta say i had a lot of fun with this one uh and talking to these guys uh, and that was episode uh, 79, uh, where we talked with all of the Dakar entrants for 2023. That was Ricky, 
uh, Bray Beck, Skylar House, Mason Klein, the entire American Rally Originals team, uh, Jacob Argybright and Ace Nilsson all sitting in on that one. And that one is a long one. It's a two, almost two hours, really headed over to three hours long. Uh, but it was a really awesome episode. It was a lot of fun, you know, hearing these guys and talking. And now, you know, look at that, you know, a couple of years later, and now you've got uh, Skylar Howes and Ricky Brabeck on the same Honda team uh, making it happen. So, you know, who knows? We've got a lot going on. Uh, will we see a third American added to the Honda team? Yeah, I don't know. Mason Klein's racing, uh, racing Honda South America. Just saying. Quick caffeine break there. All right, so let's continue on from there. We did do another in the bivouac with none other than Jimmy Lewis uh, talking about some of the training, some of his history, some of his stuff, uh, and a very cool and very memorable. I mean, think about this, 200 episodes, and I remember still towards the end talking about sand and riding in the sand and, you know, my theory of operation, which is basically treat it like a 747. The bigger the bike, the higher the stall speed, so you want to carry some speed. And then versus, uh, you know, what he said right off the bat, corrected me and said, well, it's more about balance. So I'll let you tune into that one. But very awesome talking to Jimmy Lewis. Uh, very, very well known uh, for that. And now has stepped up uh, to the plate and is now working with Robbie Gordon and the team over at Nora uh, as the motorcycle race director for them. So a lot of progress going on there. Uh, we did another in the bivouac with Colton Udall. Uh, man, there's just so many great episodes uh, that we have done, you know, talking with Matt Sutherland, doing interviews with Skylar Howes. Uh, we talked with Edgar Cota, uh, which is another one. He was the Baja 1000 Ironman winner uh, this last year's uh, edition of the Baja 1000, the 2023 edition. Um, so very awesome to see how this is all shook and down with these guys and what has happened over the years. So I'm, I don't know. I love it. Got a lot going on. Got a lot, uh, a lot of stuff. But you know, every once a week we get to talk to some different people and then bring you guys an episode and and talk a little bit more about that. And so, yeah. So I'm gonna cut the episode here. I got to get on getting the next episode up, which again is going to be with Carter Klein, Arturo Salas of the uh, 11X team. That is the hero racing bike. They're getting ready for the Baja 500 here coming up in just under 20 days, I believe now. So that one's gonna be epic. Looking forward to keeping track of those guys and how they are doing. And I mean, continuing on, man, this is uh this is awesome. So once again, I don't think I have said it enough. I want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the podcast, who has enjoyed the episodes, who has provided feedback, good, bad, whatever. I don't care. It's one of those things that we all continue to grow. I might be missing the boat on something that you guys want to know about that I'm happy to research and figure out and, and bring you guys more information. So please never hesitate to reach out. If you haven't already, you can always email us directly. Uh, you can find the email in the description. If you're going to, uh, if you're on the Instagram and on the socials, you know, same thing, send us a direct message on Instagram at chasing waypoints. Uh, and you know, that's, man, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it has been a journey. I can only say thank you so many times, but I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate both all the organizations and the companies that have supported the journey and made things happen and helping us move forward. And we're looking forward to partnering again and doing a lot of stuff, you know, for the future. We got a lot, a lot, a lot to go. I'm watching, I'm watching the analytics. I'm watching this and I'm watching how, the show continues to grow year over year, more and more people like you that are listening now that are new to this, that have only been subscribed for a few episodes. This is, you know, you're not alone. There's a lot of people around us that are getting into the sport and that are curious about getting into the rally raid side of things that are curious, even just about adventure riding, or they want to know these stories about, you know, what Skylar doing and how he's training and the transition into Honda and, you know, how Mason Klein set up that bike uh, the new, the newest generation Kove, you know, for the Dakar, you know, him and core off-road, uh, you know, basically rebuilding this bike into what they wanted to have in, in a detailed race bike. You know, there's so many things, you know, so many people out there, uh, and so much information and so many great stories. So I'm excited to continue to bring you guys more stories. We're going to drop the episode right there. I hope everybody is doing well. And remember, it'll make sense when you get there. Enjoy the ride.